Hello, I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the League of Women Voters. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition C, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 6th. The city collects a tax on gross receipts from many businesses operating in San Francisco. The current maximum tax rates on gross receipts range from 0.16% to 0.65%. Certain businesses with more than $1 billion in gross receipts 1,000 employees nationwide, and administrative offices in San Francisco pay an administrative office tax based on their payroll instead of gross receipts. For those businesses, the tax rate is 1.4% of their payroll expense. Some businesses, including certain nonprofit organizations, banks, and insurance companies, are exempt from these taxes. Increasing tax revenue spending limits requires San Francisco voter approval. Proposition C would impose additional business taxes. For businesses that pay a gross receipts tax, an additional tax of 0.175% to 0.69% on those gross revenues in San Francisco over $50 million. For businesses that pay the administrative office tax, an additional tax of 1.5% of their payroll expense in San Francisco. These additional taxes would not apply to certain nonprofit organizations and businesses exempt from local taxation, such as banks and insurance companies, revenues that are exempt from the gross receipts tax, and revenues from commercial rents that are subject to the city's early care and education commercial rents tax. Proposition C would deposit this additional tax revenue into a dedicated fund serving homeless people and preventing homelessness. The Board of Supervisors would determine each fiscal year how to distribute the additional funds from these new taxes within these limits. At least 50% to secure permanent housing for homeless people. At least 25% for mental health services specifically designed for homeless people with severe behavioral health issues. Up to 15% for services for people who have recently become homeless or are at risk of becoming homeless and up to 10% to secure short-term shelter and access to hygiene programs for homeless people. The fund would be administered by the Mayor and Board of Supervisors. An advisory committee would monitor the fund. Proposition C would increase the city's annual tax revenue spending limit for four years. A yes vote means, if you vote yes, you want to impose additional business taxes to create a dedicated fund to support services for homeless people and prevent homelessness. A no vote means, if you vote no, you do not approve these additional business taxes. I'm here with Jennifer Friedenbach. She's Executive Director of the San Francisco Coalition on Homelessness and a proponent of the measure. Hi. Hi, thanks for having me. We're joined by Jim Lazarus from the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. He's an opponent of the measure. Thanks Hi. for being here. Yeah, thank you both for being here. We're going to start with opening statements, and we'll begin with Jennifer. Hi, I am so thrilled to be here to talk about such an exciting initiative. Um, Proposition C is a bold solution to tackle the homeless crises here in San Francisco. Um, in a very carefully crafted measure, um, this um, Proposition C will tax income in San Francisco businesses above $50 million, a very small amount, just a half a percent, and it's just the income over 50 million. Um, and this measure is going to also, um, with that funding, we're going to be able to house 4,000 households, so at least 6,000 people. We're going to be able to get about 4,500 people into mental health treatment and substance abuse treatment. Um, we're going to be able to prevent homelessness. So there's so many people that are becoming homeless, San Franciscans, um, that lose their place because they don't have money for rent. Um, because of a catastrophic health issue or an elder or person with disability whose income is fixed and their rent's rising up and they'd be able to get rental assistance to stay in their homes. And we'll be able to get rid of our shelter wait list. We have over a thousand people on our shelter wait list overnight because we'll be able to add some more beds. Um, this is, you know, contrary to what my opponent's about to say, uh, this measure has built-in accountability with a very specific plan. We know where the housing's going to go. We're building on the homeless department strategic framework and uh, that's unfunded. And um, we know if we don't do this, we're spending a ton of money in health care costs, in police costs, um, when we don't house homeless people. So, you know, we're really excited about this opportunity. Great. Jim. 
thank you and the league for, for doing this and educating the voters of San Francisco. Prop C has no plan. It has no accountability. It ties up $680 million of general fund money, $380 million or more that's being spent today uh, under, the, under the budget of the city with control of the mayor and the board of supervisors and creates the largest tax increase in the history of the city, another $300 million. So next year, uh, this will require of the general fund $680 million plus a year on homeless services. No one can argue against the need to improve the services on the streets of San Francisco for our homeless population. In 1987, when Mayor Feinstein was in office, there were six or 7,000 homeless people on the streets of San Francisco or without a known address. Uh, a few years later, there were still six or 7,000 people on the street and we were spending $100 million a year. Now we're spending $382 million a year and we have six or 7,000 homeless people on the streets of San Francisco. As Lieutenant Governor Newsom recently said, we could spend four or $500 million more and until we deal with this regionally and at the state level, we're not gonna solve it. We may house 4,000 people for $3.4 billion over the next five years, but they'll be backfilled with 4,000 other people. We need to deal with this in Sacramento and in the nine Bay Area counties and not with the largest tax increase in the history of the city. That leads us into our first question and it's gonna to go to Jim and it's uh, probably what you were just talking about. Um, do you think Proposition C is the right way to address homelessness in San Francisco? No, because it's the largest set aside of general fund money more than the library, the police, fire services, rec and park, plus the new tax increase. Uh, we have to look at the entire spending for homeless services. We've created a new homeless department and that's the right thing to do by Mayor Lee a couple of years ago to try to consolidate services and get a handle at one leadership point on dealing with all the facets of homelessness in San Francisco. But that process hasn't been completed and we have a new mayor and a new administration which needs to be given the chance to develop a plan of action based on the $382 million we're spending today. Same question to you, Jennifer. Yeah, um, you know, we um, spend in San Francisco three, just 3% 3 of our budget on homelessness. And so we have to put the numbers in context. Um, when Feinstein came in, we had a major divestment at the federal level, created a homeless crisis. We started investing and what did we do? We housed people. And right now we have, we're housing 8,000 people. That's what we're using 61% of our homeless money on, is housing people who used to be homeless. The rest of the funding, um, go, you know, we have also, we have shelter for 2,500 people. And so what's happening between Feinstein is now is this massive housing crisis. So we're having more people become homeless. We're going upstream with this measure. We're gonna keep people in their homes. It's, it's not gonna expand the homeless population, obviously. It's gonna rapidly or very dramatically decrease it down because we're keeping San Franciscans in their home and they're not adding to the, the um, homeless population. So this is absolutely well thought out. It's going to work and it's, it's historical. Okay, great. My next question is, you mentioned it before, the plan for the revenue. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about uh, the yes on C's uh, idea of what the plan is for this increased revenue. Yeah, so we, when we developed this measure, we got a lot of input, including from the Chamber of Commerce, and made a lot of every change, actually, that they recommended to us on the tax side. On the other side, for the homeless spending, um, we basically um, got input from the department heads of the Mayor's Office of um, Housing and Community Development, the Homeless Department, the Department of Public Health. Um, we had them submit what their plans were, and they're very specific. So for example, the housing, we're taught we have a thousand SRO rooms that are vacant that they'll be able to fill immediately with this money. The landlord said that they'll rent to the city if the city manages the rooms. Um, we know that we're gonna have, um, in addition to that, um, we have um, pipeline housing that we can put homeless people in um, that is unfunded. And so we already have the sites identified. We know where the housing is going to go. Um, in addition, we have rapid rehousing and a really exciting, um, uh, some exciting initiatives have been tremendously ex successful of giving people short-term subsidies in the private market where they're then able to take over the rent on their own. So we know exactly how this is going to work and it's going to be phenomenal. Great. And Jim, uh, the opponent's view of the plan for the revenue. The plan is only an appropriation of $682 million and a goal in the ordinance itself over five years to house 4,000 people 
and add a thousand emergency shelter beds, which the city should be doing. It's been our position for a decade that the city needs to focus on emergency shelter. It has not been the position until recently of the coalition. But $3.4 billion over five years out of the general fund for homelessness, and it's more than a few percent of the discretionary general fund of the city. This is a huge expenditure of money without a guarantee that the, the unfortunate situation in other parts of the Bay Area won't backfill the success we may have here. There are thousands of people under the freeways and in the streets of the East Bay and San Jose, and it has to be dealt with regionally. We shouldn't be spending hundreds of millions of dollars of new money in San Francisco for the same fix of keeping ultimately three, four, five, six thousand people on the street. Great. Closing statements, and we'll start with you, Jennifer. Yeah, so, you know, the measure is very specific. The money has to be spent where it has to be spent. Half of the money has to go to housing of homeless people. It's very, uh, very small amount to admin, um, uh, less than 3% they can spend on admin. 25% um, has to go to substance abuse and mental health. 15% um, for prevention, 10% for shelters. So, you know, you, you can say that there's no accountability in the plan, but there is because it's not like the city can spend the money on anything else. We looked at what are successful models, what works in San Francisco, where are our gaps. We know in San Francisco the reason that the homeless system is a failure is because the capacity is so low. Everywhere people go, they get turned away. We have over 7,000 households seek, that are homeless seeking housing. We have half of our homeless population become homeless before the age of 25. This plan forces the city to go upstream, get our 3,000 kids into housing, serve our um, homeless youth and get them into housing, um, get our folks that have severe impairments out on the streets the help that they need, and we can be really creative because it's general fund spending. We know what works when it comes to behavioral health, and so we'll be able to do this with this plan. Um, this is what you know people have been working on for years, and we're saying this is what needs to happen, and we're going to be putting it into place, and we'll see a visible difference on the streets. We will it'll dramatically change what's going on um, in San Francisco. The homeless crisis hurts all of us. It hurts all of us if we're living in the situation. It hurts us as San Franciscans having you know to experience it, and we can turn it around with this measure. Great, and Jim, closing statements. Clearly the businesses, employers, residents, visitors want the homeless crisis dealt with in San Francisco and throughout the Bay Area. But a $382 million set aside and $300 million of new tax revenue from a handful of employers uh, without any input uh, in the determination about who should be paying this tax, how broadly is it based, what is its impact on job development uh, and, and the general fund Business taxes are the number two source of general fund revenue that pay for police and fire, uh, general hospital, wreck and park. And if you jeopardize that through bad tax policy, you cost the city general fund money, you cost the city services, you cost San Franciscans jobs. Uh, we're not arguing the need, we're arguing the methods chosen to tackle a major problem that we all want tackled. So we want to sit down with the coalition, with Mayor Breed, uh, with uh, the Board of Supervisors and service providers and come up with a plan, a long range permanent plan in conjunction we would hope with the new governor next year to deal with this at a state level, regionally and at the right form of budgeting for San Francisco's needs to balance the needs of a homeless uh, service with the needs of all the services San Franciscans receive every day. Great. Thank you both for your comments and for your Thank time. You. Thank you for having us. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available starting October 9th at City Hall, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 6th.